Hello again, I am Jim Bob. Welcome back to American Outback. And uh, we are about to sell the last of our soybeans. So we had a bit of a mad dash. The last episode ran over because we wanted to... Uh, really wanted to try and get those uh, items in before the episode ended. Didn't quite get all of them, but we got enough of them. So... Uh, we now own a Big Bud 450 and we own the 8 meter pl uh, uh, culti plow as well. And we are also going to try and get the 18 meter Great Plain Cedar as well. which will replace our Horsch Pronto. So we'll be selling the, uh, the Horsch Pronto and we'll be selling the Jumper Plow. Both of those will go. It does mean that we will have to do an extra step of fertilization because the Great Plains Cedar does not fertilize. It literally only plants seed, but it plants everything. And I mean everything except potatoes. You know, potatoes have always been their own specialized, one of a kind cedar jobs. But everything else has fallen into one of two cedars. It's either been, you know, the root, uh, the uh, the row crops, so sugar beets, corn, and obviously with 17, uh, sunflowers as well, and then everything else has always fallen on the other cedar. Soybeans is a bit of the the odd one there in the sense that it's available on both cedars. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. But we are going to dispense with uh, one cedar which limits us to the range of crops that we can go go with and uh, buy the other cedar. We have enough almost to buy it outright. I think it needs 168. Oh, it's only 142, so there we go. Buy. Boom. So straight away at the start of the episode, there we go. We have our third and final piece of the DLC that we're buying uh, straight away. We have no more grain to sell. Plus the price is probably now, you know, through the floor for the soybeans, given that we've just sold 122,000 litres of the stuff. It'll certainly have taken a hammering. It'll be a while before that recovers. But we can make some money back by getting rid of the jumper plough and by getting rid of the Horsch Pronto as well. I may even get rid of the Coon Seed Tank as well. May not need that anymore. Nearly turned off a bit early there. I am going to have to do uh, to spend a bit of money on our remaining Optum so that I can buy the care wheels for it and that way we can switch them over as and when we need to. We can run either the care wheels or we can run wide wheels or even standard if we really want to, but that's not going to happen. I very rarely ever run standard tyres on, on any tractors these days. It's usually wide tyres or care wheels or duals, depending on uh, which tractor it is and what I'm using it for. So, let's pull back into the yard. Oh, I think I just scraped along the side of one of the barns there. And let's drop our trailer off, park her up.
Try and get her nice and straight. Straightish. That's looking pretty good. Park up the truck. And there we go. So, engine off, lights off. Let's start bringing the rest of the equipment home. Oops. Actually, no, we. St we still have another field to harvest, don't we? So let's take the equipment over to that. I'm going to need to bring that truck back out again. I should have parked it at the top of field. <laughs> I was right there. The cell point was spit, spits out right at the top of the field. I could have just literally just driven out around the corner and parked and that was it. And I brought it all the way back to the farm and now I've got to take it all the way back to the field again. Ugh. Never mind, eh? These things happen. And then we will put our new equipment to use. The other great advantage of the Horse Pronto over the uh, Great Plains Cedar is that it has that built-in cultivation. Uh, the Great Plains Cedar does not, unfortunately. But as I say, we have the 8 meter culti plow, so we can get that running and cultivating our fields in the background while we're harvesting this one. Uh, there we go. going to park this guy up we're not going to go off straight away so we need the truck and we need to get the other uh, we need to get everything else in position and, uh, and up and running as well so we will use our puma to ferry the cedar back to the farm it's going to be uh, a little while before we get to use that, so we have uh, harvesting to do and we have fields to clean and fertilize before we start planting. Oops, Ugh, caught those rocks. That's the only drawback to these dual wheels on the front is that it does make me you know, a little bit wider, just increases the footprint of this vehicle. Eventually, as the farm expands, we will start looking at bringing in other large equipment as well. So we'll look at bringing in some of the, the larger cedars. And we'll look at bringing in uh, maybe one of the larger cultivators as well. Uh, we'll definitely be looking at upgrading the auger. When we start getting onto larger fields, the one we have at the moment is fine. And then eventually, once we have the money and the fields and the equipment to use it, we will bring in the 747. The big, big bud. There's that uh, height issue there. Just uh, catching the trailer because it sits so low to the ground. Just going to cut through the uh, hedgerow here. Beacons are off. Let's drop the header. header 
is now folded up and ready. We are positioned just right. There we go. So. Listen to that engine noise. And if you haven't already seen it, we have a spinning fan behind the ventilator. How cool is that? And we, at, and we actually have a working mechanism there. I, I was hoping that we would get it. I wasn't holding my breath. I was figuring that would maybe perhaps be a PC only thing or we wouldn't necessarily see moving parts in the engine block, but we do have them. I think that's so cool. So, lights on. I love the noise that this tractor makes. I actually prefer this engine noise over the 747. So cool. Right. So, let's go get this guy to work. We'll start off, we'll get him cultivating field two. I wonder how much seed is actually left. I'm just going to bit bit cheeky and park that there for a second I'm wondering how much stuff I actually have left in my cedar uh, let's just go check because if there's still seed and fertilizer in the cedar I might as well use those up before I sell you know I've paid to put them in there I might as well get my money's worth so to speak So let's have a look. Uh, hardly any seed, if any. Uh, let me detach. So we've got no seed left, just fertilizer. Hmm. Well, the fertilizer is still quite a lot in there, and it's quite expensive. So what we're going to do is, yeah, we have 270 horsepower in this tractor. It's a bit of a push. But, if you haven't seen the Big Bud DLC review video that I've done yet, why not? Go watch it immediately. But you'll also know that this trailed lifter is very, very useful. Not just for connecting to the uh, SPSL 9 plow, but also for connecting to anything. Because Big Bud both the 450 and the 747 do not have a rear three-point hitch this gives them a rear three-point hitch to connect up to the plow but it can be used with everything else as well as I demonstrated in my review video when I hooked it up to a uh, the Amazon a Condor Cedar so we're gonna get one of these because we're gonna need it And that will enable us to move other equipment around. Now, I kind of just, in a way, I kind of bought that a little bit too early just then. Could possibly have held off on that for a little while. Uh, where are my sea tanks? I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Yes, I am. What I'm going to do is because we have. Oh, don't get me stuck. There we go. See tanks around the corner. There they are. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill up this front tank. I'm not going to put any seed in the cedar itself. I'm just going to put the 1500 in this seed tank. And we're going to run this. I'm going to drop that. 
We'll put the claws down. And drop the arms. There we go. So we've got those out of the way now. Let's close that lid. There we go. But we have enough fertilizer to run just the uh, just the fertilizer from that. Plus the seed from this seed tank means that we can do this field here. Now, normally, as you know, I tend to uh, spray or fertilize my fields first and then seed so that I just have one final stage to do that. But as this is probably the only field that we're going to be working, I'm not going to do it that way. So uh, we are going to plant, uh, not soybeans, <laughs> we've done enough of soybeans. I think we're going to plant some barley. We have some wheat. Uh, let's do... Hmm. Yeah, let's do barley. On this field. So he's going to be a little bit slow. Because he's right on the... Uh, the minimum power requirement, so he's not going to be as 100% fast as he could be, but he'll be fast enough to get that field done. So now we can head back to Big Bud. Are we causing a traffic jam? No, we're not. Good. Uh, so let's clean. Let's clean this field just here. Let's clean field 20. No indicators on the tractor itself. No, no uh, beacons either. Just lots and lots of uh, of lights. So I'll unfold the uh, the culti plow. There we go. And what I'm going to do is once I've sold the horse pronto cedar. go so he is off and running beautiful once I've sold the uh, horse pronto cedar I am going to buy a corn header for our combine because we don't have one and that will allow us to harvest both corn and sunflowers which we will now be able to plant because we have the new cedar. So it's opened up some real opportunities for us with our crops. We can now plant anything and we don't need two different expensive cedars. We just need one. And I think that's pretty awesome. So we're going to park this at the top end of the field. And then we're going to run our combine up and down each side of the field, training it with the auger wagon, as we did before. And uh, rebuild our supply of soybeans. We're going to replant canola on uh, field 19, so that we can rebuild our canola. And then... Uh, in fact, actually, no, we just sold canola and the price is going to drop. So, once we sold the equipment, we're going to plant 
either corn or sunflowers and I'm leaning at the moment towards sunflowers. Careful not to uh, drive into the crops. I, as, as always, I play with crop destruction. Last thing I want to do is take out a, a few rows of my most valuable crop. Or well, normally, what is the price? How did it much did it drop down to? Uh, soybeans, fourteen twenty-two. Wow, we really hammered that price down. <laughs> but we're pushing the price of sunflowers up. Unfortunately, we don't have sunflowers to sell, but. It's pushing up the price of wheat as well. So, and even barley, that's going up a little bit as well. So, let's get going on the harvesting. Worker is hired. There's our uh, 450. Look at that, big bud. Power and spirit. And an awesome, awesome engine noise as well. So glad that we have this tractor. It just looks cool. It sounds cool. It is cool. And it's ours. Love it. Uh, right, so uh, let's get the auger going. Lights on full. Just realised we're still working in the in the dark. Could should probably have uh, sped time up a bit. It's too late now. So we will continue night working until this field is done. Ooh, we are a little short. Let's head back, grab that. It's not much, but, you know, it all counts. Ah, oh, don't tell me we've done it all the way down the line. Or is it just that bit? We've done it all the way down the line. Ugh. Nuts. I thought I'd positioned it carefully enough. Obviously not. So we'll go back. We'll double check. You know, because it may not seem like much, but on a field this long, it'll add up. And it won't add up to a huge amount, but as I said, this is the most valuable crop in the game. So... You want as much of it as you can possibly get. A little bit careless of me there. A little bit clumsy. There'll be a couple of patches where we don't get anything by the look of it. And then some patches where we do get something. See, there we go. We're back to collecting little bits here and there again. We haven't even caught back up yet, and you can see we're already al almost up to 50, uh, 50 litres. And again, it doesn't sound much, but when you consider how short a distance we've travelled, this is where we first spotted it coming up. So there we go, just doing that little bit of work on the side there. Look how much extra we've gained and see just how little a distance on that field we've actually travelled. And now factor the entire length of that field and all of a sudden a little bit becomes a lot. So uh, that's why I went back. We'll play it safe, we'll definitely overlap the field this time. There 
we go. So how are you getting on with the DLC yourselves? You know, those of you that have bought it, what's your favourite piece so far? Let me know in the comments. I think, for me, I'm not really sure what my favourite piece is just yet. I love the 450. Just, I love the engine noise. I think it's a nicer sounding engine than the 747. Really does sound good. I love the flexibility and the versatility of the Great Plains Cedar. You know, to be able to plant all of those different grain types off just one single cedar, that's fantastic. And it's got a decent capacity as well, you know, uh, five and a half thousand litres plus. And the tank is purely seed. It's not split, you know, you know between seed and fertiliser, it's purely seed. I did have a couple of issues with it uh, in terms of using it with a tracked challenger as I uh, noted in my DLC review video I found it made it very difficult to steer and control the challengers uh, they both tended to kick up a little bit almost like uh, when they're pulling a trailer that's too heavy for them you know they would start to steer out of control a little bit And start to, le uh, to, to lean and veer across the road slightly. Very awkward to control with the track challenges. But the uh, the review video where I switched to the Black Massey. Standard sized tractor. Admittedly with dual wheels. But standard sized tractor worked just fine. We'll be able to use our Optum to run it. Needs 280 horsepower, so it's a little bit too power hungry for our Puma. But we were never planning on using the Puma for all of that kind of work anyway. The Puma was always going to be more about the yard work. Running the bales and uh, keeping, keeping, charge, keeping the animals under control. That was always the primary goal of, of the Puma. Just a useful backup tractor in the current situation where we only have the two uh, case tractors now. It has just enough power to run that Horsch Pronto. And we can only really get away with it because we're on a flat map. You know, if we're on a map with inclines and bumpy contoured hills it would really struggle so it looks as though I make, again it's a bit hard to tell because we are slightly overlapping the edge of the field it looks as though we might not actually fill the tank completely on a single pass I honestly can't remember whether or not we had this issue last time I'm going to let it run down the same side of the field and I'll let it play out and see if it can actually make it all the way down I get a feeling it's going to stop just before the end I honestly can't remember from the first time we harvested this field whether or not it will make it all the way down or not kind of hope it does because I want to you know uh, drop this auger for a moment take the uh, take the optum back to the farm pick up the jumper plow and take that and go and sell that ok 
Okay, so let's drop that just there. So off we go back to the farm. You'll see there's a little bit of juddering there. One thing I have noticed is that the DLC does cause some juddering issues. I did make a note of that in my review video. I'm hoping that there'll be a patch that will resolve that. It's not too bad. Or at least in my experience it hasn't been too bad. But I think if you go really heavy on some of the big butt equipment it could potentially become more of an issue. Helper J has finished their task. Is Helper J the, uh, the 450? No. Ah, oh, Helper J is the Puma. Ah, oh, well, in that case. I didn't realise that was so close to being done. We'll leave this hooked up to the auger. We'll go and sell the uh, the cedar and the plow and the seed tank. And then hopefully that will give us enough money to be able to buy the corn header for our combine. As I say, we are going to lose some some value off of our items because they have been used a fair bit already. So they are going to you know, suffer a little bit in that respect. There you go, look at that. We had just enough seed to get that field done. We didn't really dent the... Uh, Didn't really dent the um, fertilizer too much in the end. Never mind. Uh, oh, I'm going to sell these, aren't I? So go the wrong way. There we go. So I wonder how much we'll get for them. I think it would be great if we could actually, if when we sold a cedar, if there was still fertilizer or seed in the tank, if we could actually get that factored into the uh, the resale value or the trade-in value. Or if there was a way to actually, <coughs> excuse me, there was a way to empty the seed and leftover seed and fertilizer out of these and put them into something else before we sold them that would be great but unfortunately I have yet to find such a thing one thing I am going to try though is see if I can just unload that little bit of seed into our new cedar So let's just drop that off there for a second. If I plonk that down there. I wonder if I can actually use this like a, a delivery system. Uh, no, I can't. I didn't think I could. It was worth a try. I mean, there's only a, a few hundred seeds in here anyway, so it's not like a huge, a huge loss to us. Just worth an experiment. Sometimes when you think outside the box, wonderful things can happen. Sometimes you just get a headache, but you, you never know. All right, so our auger is almost out of uh, capacity. Uh, let's drop that there. Oh, not our auger, sorry, our combine. Let's drop that there. Move out of the way. Uh, 76, that's not bad. I thought we'd get less than that. So we'll sell that. And uh, we'll sell that. Beautiful. Oh, we've definitely got enough for a corn header now. 
Oh, he's just made it look. Oh, that's fantastic. I was okay to leave him. I have to be right on him at the start here, though. We can only really get away with it with this crop. I think any other crop, and we would not have had a chance of that. So now we'll run this all the way along up the side on this pass and that means that you know, we can then leave him on the way back down and pick him up again when he gets back to the bottom so our, seven four, uh, sorry, our 450 is still plodding along on field 20 as we can see on the minimap there helper A he stood about two thirds of the field by the look of it up here for a second uh, so let's buy the header while we still have the money uh, we want the nine meter header now I could go for this one but this one doesn't fold which is a real shame because this is the proper header and I don't really want to have to faff about with the trailer so we're gonna get the slightly cheaper Capello Diamant HS12 instead same size but this one folds so we now own a corn header. Awesome. So now, with our new cedar and our new header, we can plant every grain type and we can harvest every grain type. I love it when a plan comes together. So yeah, we'll put some flowers on this field. We will need to clean it before we can plant it. And that culti plow, it's... It's a big field for for something that's only 8 metres. So we're going to hire a larger cultivator. Not buy, because we can't really afford it, but we're going to hire a larger cultivator just to clean the field off. Our culti plow is going to be mainly used on the small fields and also instead of a plow, when we need to plow, But it can say it gets us by in a squeeze. <clears throat> the next purchase we're gonna have to make is gonna have to be a good sized cultivator. That is you know, an uh, uh, unfortunate reality of no longer having the horse pronto is that we can no longer just plant directly onto the onto the uh, onto the soil anymore. You know, we have to clean the fields up first. But it's a worthwhile sacrifice for the flexibility that that new cedar gives us. And the fact that it's an 18 metre cedar as well means it's double the width of the Pronto. The Pronto is only 9 metres, so we can plant fields twice as fast. Quite literally twice as fast. You know, it runs at the same operating speed, just plants twice the width. almost full with our auger. I'm hoping we're going to have enough space to actually make it to the top, but I'm a little I'm not going to take the gamble. I'm actually going to go and unload now and then quickly pick up the uh, the combine as he reaches the top again. Even if I only unload just a couple of thousand litres, just want to make sure I've got enough space left to make it all the way up to the top. Last thing I want, because he's so pushed on space is for him to start another row with something left in the seed tank. OK, 
Okay, that'll do. Just enough to, uh, say, make enough space. Get alongside him again. Make sure he's completely empty before he turns around and goes back down again. I say he. I don't actually know who's working that. Is it a he or is it a she? It's a he. One fully empty combine. These uh, these grain trailers are amazing. I absolutely love them. I'd like to get a second one of these for our farm in the not too distant future. Yeah, you know, if we're going to be planting, you know, a low yield, sorry, a, a, a low, a low price, high yield crop like wheat or barley, or even corn, on this field, we are going to need, at the minimum, a second one of those trailers, potentially even a third. I mean, we can't even do this entire field with a single trailer. I think we need. Uh, I think we need an unload before this uh, before we actually make it off this field. And that's with just a single trailer. So we definitely need a second trailer. We can we can cope with just one for now, but we will be adding a second one when we have you know, funds available to spend on a second trailer. Right now those funds are kind of, any funds that we do have are earmarked for other things. We still need to expand our, uh, our workable fields. I want to try and get field 6 next. That's another good sized field. Uh, let me see, how much is field 6? Just so we've got a, a workable target. Uh, there we go. How much is field six going to cost us? 257,000. Okay, so it's still quite pricey. There's, there's the 450, chugging away. <sighs> Love that engine noise. Uh, so what was I doing? Uh, oh yes. In the uh, in the Puma. Now we can't pick up that, but we will pick it up with our combine on the way back to the farm. We'll leave that trail lifter there for now. In fact, actually. We don't need that for a while yet, so we'll take the hit. You know, I bought it, kind of didn't really need it straight away. We will need it later. I kind of got carried away with talking about how useful it was going to be for having for us having a 450, uh, and then went ahead and bought it without realizing that we no longer actually have any equipment that's going to going to need to be hooked up that way. So we can get some money back that way. It's cost us 1500, 1500 bucks. It's not too bad. To basically just sit in a car park for a moment. But, uh, there we go. Uh, we are out of time as well. So uh, I'm going to run this back. And as I do, uh, I will end up... You know, nothing left to say, but uh, thank you for watching. You know, please do like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, if you have any comments, you know, any questions, please do let me know in the down below. You know, feed my comment section. I will respond as best I can to you. I 
don't forget to check out my other farms and also my other contents as well so uh, not just more farm sim stuff but also you know, my upcoming Tomb Raider series when it comes it'll be very very soon now for that to come out you know, uh, my little mini games Yeah, my No Man's Sky playlist. Please do, you know, check those out as well. I do thank you for all your continued support of the channel and your continued views. You can also reach me on my Facebook page. I am, you know, always, you know, uh, looking to uh, interact with you guys wherever I can. So, uh, again, any questions, any comments, you know, feel free to uh, to post on my Facebook. Uh, Facebook page and I will get back to you on that as soon as best I can thank you for watching my name's Jim Bob and I will catch you back on the farm very soon <laughs>